So welcome everybody. Welcome to International Tax Planning Channel by Luca Tagliatela, who am I? And uh, it's my honor and pleasure to introduce you to a very close friend of mine and colleague, which is Mr. Francisco Molina from Chile. Francisco is a very close friend of mine. We work together on common clients as regard, especially South American structure. Francisco is a lawyer. He works in Chile pretty much, uh, even if he travels a lot and he does structure with North America too. But maybe he can introduce himself a bit better than I did. Would you mind, uh, Francisco, please, for our audience today? Thank you. Thank you, Luca, for your very warm and welcome words. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Francisco Molina, as Luca said, from Santiago de Chile. Um, I am a tax consultant since 10 years now. I've been preparing myself first uh, in internal tax uh, here in Chile in a magister, and afterwards in international tax law in the University of Business in Vienna, where I met Luca. As Luca said, I, am, I advise clients both uh, inbound and outbound especially to the U.S. and to certain uh, tax places in Europe, because we have a strong clientele that holds their assets in Europe because of their background. And anyway, uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so Thank much you for much. your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So we can uh, go straight to the point and uh, let our uh, audience uh, to, to get to know a bit better about uh, Chile and maybe South America in general as regards the tax system, the, the fiscal law. So um, pretty much the, the, first, uh, the first question I would like to ask you is what about the personal tax residence since you know, I deal a lot with uh, moving people abroad and many Italians worldwide speaking and really interesting in South America. Um, how, how does it work, the, the personal tax residence in, uh, in Chile? How many, the, um, the principle, uh, how do you say, I'm sorry. Uh, anyways, it's about the 183 days as well? Or? Yes, effectively. Effectively. We have that rule here also in Chile. It's uh, after 183 days, you become a tax resident here in Chile. But for the first three years, you are not taxable for your foreign income, only for your Chilean income. And it has also a rule that even though if you leave Chile afterwards, you're still taxable for your Chilean income. So it's uh -huh. a pretty straight it's a pretty straightforward uh, rule, but the advantage is that for the first three years, you are not taxable for your foreign income. Ah, so you mean if I, as an Italian, move to Chile and I become a tax resident in Chile for the first three years in a row, I don't get tax any, any uh, I get exempted on my foreign source of income. So exactly. any time. Like dividends, for example, if my company is in Panama and I get a dividend, the dividend won't be taxed in Chile for three years exactly. uh, in a row. But it's, exactly. which is, it's very interesting. And exactly. as far as I understood, there should be an exit tax. I guess you were you you were referring about it. So the moment no, no it's not it's not an exit tax. Uh, we don't have exit tax in Chile. Good. Uh, but what we do have is that. If you have the tax residence in Chile and you move abroad, then you will still be taxable for your Chilean income. Ah, okay. As a non-resident on your, it's like territorial taxation. Exactly. So if my company or my source of income is in Chile, of course, exactly. Chile will apply its power of taxing. I see, I see, exactly. I see. Exactly. Great. But anyway, that um, uh, the starting point is if I move to Chile and I want to reside there 183 days per fiscal year, I would be deemed as a tax resident in Chile. Precisely. And then worldwide taxation will apply. After three After years. Three years, back, which is, it's really interesting because, uh, and then we get to the, to the second point. You know, my, my audience, my clients pretty much are European or anyway Italians, but anyway European based. It's really hard, and I tested myself in person, uh, um, getting a visa when we move to an extra EU country such as Chile. 
So, of course, okay, let's say I want to become a Chilean tax resident, and then there's, there is the 183 days rule. But what about the real chance to get the visa? Should I invest? Should I marry uh, somebody? Uh, if, you want to, if you want to marry a Chilean, then you won't have any problem, really. That's, I would uh, love to. I would that, love to. You know I would. <laughs> But if you are a EU uh, resident that have money and want to invest in Chile through an investment company, a conduit company here in Chile, it's not difficult to make uh, if you have a, a good advisor. It's very easy to do, really. I mean, there are a few regimes that can help you out to establish in Chile. What the main concept here, uh, the main concept that we have for uh, immigration purposes is that if you can afford your own expenses, then you won't have any problem getting a visa. The visa here, it's uh, uh, you apply for a temporary visa for the first two years. It's a temporary visa of one year. Then you renew it for the third one. And then you have to apply for a permanent residents uh, for the third year onwards. Otherwise, you have to leave the country. But the, the good thing about the first two temporary visas is that they serve as background for the final visa of the three years. After many years, you can also apply for, for citizenship, but that's really another thing. And I, but it's a different thing. But if you are a digital nomad and you want to establish in Chile and be in the desert for one year and in Patagonia for another year, and you want to travel from a, from a lodge near a river or in the Atacama Desert, then you won't have any problem. Right, that sounds great. And then, of course, just to clarify better, one thing is the uh, permanent residence. Another thing is the citizenship, of course. Exactly, two, two total different things. One oh. serves as background. One serves serves as background for the other, because it gives you the the time frame required for the citizenship. But but uh, usually you just have to have the visa, and then you have visa for investors outside the Chile. I mean, if you have a business that gives you dividends const constantly and you can uh, prove that you own this flow, this stream of money that allows you to pay your expenses here in Chile, Chile is going to be very happy to receive you because we also have VAT and we like foreigners and it's a very tight country. Uh, so, yeah. And then people love to speak Spanish, by the way, better than uh, in English. So... It's a really, well, really good where to be. It's a good, it's a good university to, to, to learn Spanish. It's a Spanish-speaking country. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, if you want to learn Spanish, yeah. you can come here. Makes sense. So as far as I understood, uh, it's a tax-friendly uh, country, which means the tax authorities are not very strict or, let's say, aggressive. Because, for example, as you know, there are uh, many countries from the world, such as Italy, Korea, for example, uh, China, where tax authorities are really aggressive. Uh, so, uh, and even the, um, like the anti-abuse system, the anti-abuse rules, the anti-abusive rules are uh, more than, uh, like more, even more than aggressive. It's like everything you do is against the law. So, like yeah. you need an example. No, not here. Uh... Well, for starters, in our tax uh, code, we have a catalog of liberties, of uh, rights of the taxpayer, and they are usually respected by, by our local tax authority. We have very good relationship with, the, with our local tax authority, with our own IRS. The professionals are usually well prepared, even though they are not as much people as they should be of course it's a it's a matter of uh, of amount so Come they on. would usually they would usually go to big corporations when they where they know that they really can make a difference uh, about uh, g gaining more revenue for the country so 
if uh, they you would usually say that they apply the 80 20 rule they go for the 20 percent sure. that's going to make the 80 percent revenue and the the other ones are really they're not that interested even though they have certain red flags that they have to follow and they have this the fiscalization processes but I that's see. it plus you play golf together you and the tax authorities <laughs> Well, sure. sometimes uh, you, we shouldn't say that. Uh, uh, <laughs> we shouldn't say that online. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't name nobody. Let's say <laughs> no, okay. but you should, but but I mean the or or they are seated in the in the table next to you in the restaurant. Sure. It's it's very it's very horizontal here. Of course, of course, uh, the worldwide is pretty much like this. But yeah. it's great. Yeah. Uh, so one, one, one more question, if you allow me to, what about corporate income tax? So we talked about personal, uh, like how to get the tax residence. What about corporate? How do you tax companies? Uh, there are, <clears throat> well, uh, we are talking about the Chilean companies incorporated in Chile with Chilean yes. income. There are a few regimes. Uh, there are three regimes, basically. One is the general one, uh, which is taxed at 27%. But for foreigners that own these companies, they can... We have 30 treaties to avoid double taxation. So first you would say if the, if the owner is a foreigner, we would have to, to look whether the, we have or not uh, a treaty. We have uh, 33 treaties and with uh, Europe we have 19. So, as you can see, Europe is one of our main uh, allies uh, tax-wise. Uh, the companies are taxed on a 27% flat level. Uh, it, doesn't matter where, where it doesn't matter whether you have more income or less income. That's the first, the first general regime. There's another one for, for locals, which is a different thing that really, it's a transparent uh, system that the, the owners are taxed by the direct income of the company and they can use the tax paid by the company in their own, uh, as their own taxes with a, with a credit system. And finally, we have a, a income outcome uh, tax, which is a, a simpler one, but it's for small amounts of money. And one particularity, that we have in Chile, <clears throat> it's that, uh, well, as you already know, there's a big problem when the income of the company pays their taxes, then the dividends that the company distributes to its owners are taxed again. So there's an economical double taxation problem that here in Chile, we solved integrating the corporate income tax with the personal income tax. So if you have a company that pays its 27% on the income that it made, you can use as a person, as an individual, when you're determining your, your taxes, you yeah. can use that tax paid by the company as a credit to taxes here in Chile. And also, if your company paid the, the taxes and you want to distribute the dividend abroad, then you can also use, in certain cases, this tax paid by the company to pay the taxes here in Chile, and that you can use afterwards, of course, uh, abroad when you are uh, determining the dividend. So let's say there's a system of tax uh, credit and uh, incentives to exactly. avoid uh, economical double taxation, both yeah. if you like, uh, both with inbound and outbound cases, exactly. by the exactly. way, which is. Very interesting, by the way. So yeah. it's like for a for a for a foreigner, like from uh, somebody who already uh, who already has an holding, for example, in Spain, uh, it could be an option, for example, for investing or expanding his business in South America to set up a company in uh, in Chile, linked exactly. to the old to the Spanish holding, by the way. Exactly. So he can have a lot of tax advantages due yes. to the nature of the especially, Spanish holding, especially with Spain. It's one yeah. of our greatest, more uh, sound uh, treaty. And the good, the good thing about Chile is that if you're, if you're interested on, in, on op operative companies, 
uh, well, first, it's extremely easy to set up a company here in Chile. It's uh, absolutely no problem. Uh, the second thing about this is that uh, you can always structure the money, the, the income of money, through equity and through debt, so you can easily t take the debt back to your home country uh, free of taxes and leave the company here only with the equity, uh, waiting for the for the payment of the dividends. Wow, that makes Chile even more interesting. Really, really, really great. And uh, and uh, so we're getting a little bit longer, but uh, and I will see how our audience responds. And maybe I'll be you back for a second interview since Chile is getting interesting and interesting as time goes by. <laughs> Um, what about your relationship, uh, generally speaking, of course, I, I know you can't get into details for um, lawyer reasons. What about your relationship as a country with Panama, for example? Um, <laughs> yeah, with, uh, with Panama, we are, uh, we are very close commercial partners. Panama, for example, it's our biggest commercial partner in uh, Central America. And we also share a particularity with Panama. It's that Chile and Panama are the only two countries that can communicate the Atlantic and the Pacific. Well, it's, it's, it's something anecdotic, really, but uh, we have... We, yeah. we love anecdotics, so please. Yeah, well, so we have, uh, we have a very strong uh, relationship. No problems whatsoever. The structures in Panama, of course, they are uh, super looked at. But if you comply and you inform our local tax authority, then you won't have any problems, really. That sounds interesting. And, and I say I'm moving to, to, to Chile real soon to get my 10th personal tax residence because I, I like them all. You know, I like to test them all. So, Francisco, I don't want to make you waste any other time any longer, but hopefully we'll talk again uh, thank you very much for your time. Guys, if you like the video, please click su subscribe and uh, um, stay tuned. We lo love to, to have you as our host, Francisco. Thank you again endlessly, very, very much. I hope to, to see you soon, like uh, alive for real, the moment Great. this pandemic ends. I can't wait for it and having some, some real fun, maybe uh, both as regards tax structuring and even the nightlife, which I wouldn't really mind to join you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to have you here and I know a lot. So thank you very much for the invitation, Luca. Hello, My everyone. Pleasure. A pleasure. Access, bye bye. Access, talk soon. Thank you very much, Francisco. Ciao, ciao.